what's up guys sean back with another video and today we've got oprah and the half ton team i never thought i would say that or those two words belong to the same sentence or anything or any of those words but uh oprah i guess when i did the half ton dad video not too long ago this guy was in it for a second and i didn't know if he ever made any progress if there were any updates or if we'd ever find out but i was kind of curious to see if he turned his life around got on the like right path or if he ever dropped the weight because he was so young and he had so much of his life to look forward to. So uh, let's get a little update, see what's going on with him and Oprah. Her teenage son weighs more than 800 pounds and she blames herself. She is next. As difficult as life is for adults who are severely obese, imagine suffering with it as a teenager. While most high school seniors spend the year looking forward to their prom, the graduation, and all the stuff we love as seniors. Uh, Billy Robbins spent the entire year trapped inside his house. Here's Billy's story. So he didn't get to do his senior year. I had a hell of a lot of fun, but I also got to go home early from my senior year. And I don't know how. I guess I just got enough credits that I didn't have to go. So I didn't even have time to act up that much my senior year because I was still half asleep. But yeah, high school's fun. Billy was perfect in his weight as a child. You know, he was right in the guidelines and everything. And I mean, just a normal baby, you know, healthy. In kindergarten, he. Is that healthy though? And why does he still have biscuits in his freaking Easter basket? Like, I noticed he had a dozen of them before, but you guys threw biscuits in there? No wonder he packed on the damn pounds. He was a little chunky, and I used to tell everybody, oh, yes, he's going to be my football player. He's going to take care of Dad and I when we get old. As he went through elementary school, you know, he, he started putting on some weight. His uh, weight affected his school. Those desks were my friggin' nemesis in school. Because when you're fat, you can't really squeeze in there all that well. So I would always try to get like a different chair and pull it up to there. I thought I looked crazy, but I still would do it. It was embarrassing, but what are you gonna do, wedge in there? I remember one time I stood up, the damn desk was stuck to my fupa. School life very, very much. It would take him a while to get up the stairs and down. He had went to high school and the children were so mean to him. He did graduate, but he did it here at the house. And, you know, he just got to a point where his whole life stopped. Damn, naked with french fries? That's a whole nother kind of mukbang. I never tried that one. But uh, yeah, kids are mean. That's just life. Like, once you realize that people's opinions of you matter a hell of a lot less than your own, life gets so much better. As his weight continued to climb, it became more and more difficult for Billy to even move. Even short trips to the bathroom were grueling for the 800-pound teenager. My hope like for my son is that he would get active. You're digging his grave? He's not that, like, that bad yet. Well, yeah, he's that bad. But digging his grave seems a little preemptive. He's still pretty damn young. I want to see him out of the house. I want to see him doing things, experiencing things that he hasn't done before. Well, I I can get up and walk around pretty good, you know. I just can't stay. Are we watching the same thing? Also, oh, crazy time to pause it. Well, but um, yeah, no, he's not getting around all that well. I think he's definitely deluding himself. He's got like a half a like dozen friggin' Dr. Peppers in right there. Up too long because my feet start to hurt. My back starts to hurt. Just, I, I have trouble sleeping, laying down. That's my problem. So I, I sleep sitting up. His daily routine is in that bedroom, watching his television. And he goes to the bathroom, and then he's back in his chair. That's his life in there. He loves uh, hamburgers, uh, pizza, chips. When he eats a hamburger, he doesn't eat like a hamburger. He has to have two, double meat. Uh, double meat. We all love the double meat, right? But, uh, no. This guy obviously has his mom enabling him, bringing him all the food. That was the problem I saw initially. His mom, like, thinks she's doing something to help him. This is not help. This is how it gets worse, but your parents will, like, trick themselves into the state where they're deluded into believing that they're giving you the little bit of happiness, while in the momentary satisfaction, you're making it that much worse later down the road. Triple meat. There's so much that affects a large person. Triple meat. You know, you can't do anything normal. I guess my mother would be 
My best friend, you know, she pretty much takes care of me. Oh, completely. Is she baby talking a grown ass 800 pound man while she's scrubbing sloppy Joe off his face? This lady, I think she's the damn problem. She probably coddled this kid right into the friggin' obesity. Was he spoiled? I overdo for Billy. He likes junk, but he also likes good food too. Broccoli, you know, with cheese on it, of course. Can't have broccoli without cheese. It's hard saying no to your child when they want something to eat or they want this or that. That's what I got. Goodies. Goody, goody, goodies. It gets tiring, but everything I do for him. Video games, icing covered like animal crackers, which were like one of my friggin' favorites. Fritos, some kind of cheese dip, cheese on your damn broccoli, which is the only way I like broccoli, so I just don't eat it. I gotta get around a lot of that texture stuff. I eat a lot healthier now, but there's things that I still just can't get over. But that's not a way for him to lose any weight, the, like the path she's leading him down. It's all out of love. It's what mamas do. You should never, ever have to bury your child. It's one of the hardest things you'll ever have to do. Barbara says the death of her first son has caused her to overindulge Billy. Oh, man. Hold on. We gotta go back a second and look at how much damn mustard she just put on this thing. Watch this. Her son has caused her to overindulge Jesus. Billy. Matthew was my firstborn. He was born in 1982. He lived 19 months and he died. Aww. Six more years, Billy came along. When Billy turned 19 months in one day, I celebrated 20 months, 21 months. It was a celebration of life. I uh, wanted to give him more. I wanted to make sure he had everything that Matt didn't have or Matt didn't have the opportunity to have, you know, along the way. And I just thought that was food and that was clothes and that was toys and games. I spoiled Billy. That's sad, but that kind of explains why she let it get here. But just because you lost one son doesn't mean that you get to, like, put it all on him and have him just spiral out of control because you're over loving or giving him too much of the good stuff. It's nice that you want to give him all those things, but moderation is key. Even in love, you love somebody too much, they'll just absolutely spiral out of control. He'll think that the whole world's supposed to treat him like that, and the world's a pretty cruel place. They don't all love you. Really? I don't know how to stop. Well, doctor has warned Billy's parents that if something drastic isn't done, their son's going to die before his 20th birthday. Some of the video you're about to see is pretty graphic. Do you yes, want to die? I am. Do you want to die? Sometimes, yes. Oh. Sometimes, you know, I just wish that I could just get out of my body. It's uh, really hard. It's like a prison that you just move around with. Billy and his parents. At least I know where he's getting all his snack money. That buddy, he's got a feet finder page. I tried to make one of those. They wouldn't take my feet. Too big, too many corn, something. I don't know. Size 15 falls out of the, like, range for women's feet, I guess. I, I can't squish tomatoes, apparently, for a couple bucks. It's decide that surgery is their only hope. It takes an ambulance, fire truck, and a team of medics to get him safely to the hospital. On the day, yeah, I felt kind of like a bit of a spectacle. And I kind of noticed people looking at me. Kind of made you feel like you were being shown off to the world or something. You can just turn around and take a seat on that. Does that work? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I love you. He's coming back. That's the whole point. Go there, get better. Also, he ate so much mustard, like he only owns mustard-colored shirts to cover the stains. That's like a level 900 move. He's a smart one there. I'm so used to doing so much for him, it's weird watching everybody else scramble. <laughs> that is hard to let go. I'm like wanting to go in there for a bit and bathe him, you know, because that's what I do. Take a deep breath on me. Billet situation right now is very critical. Dr. Sexy appears again. You go get him, doctor, now. You save every... He's, like, worldwide. This guy's saving fatties from here to friggin', like, Germany. He's all over the damn place. 
he has pushed his way to the limit that is uh, overdriving his heart and lung. Billy's health is so dire, he must spend 30 days on a strict diet before doctors can operate. We're really talking about a medical emergency. Bill. Billy will undergo surgery to have nearly 70 pounds of his abdomen. Those are the biggest nips I ever saw. Removed. They're going to remove the front part of the stomach. They said it'd be about five, six hour surgery, so it's going to be a long, long, long day. Since he's been going through this, I have felt like this is all my fault. I love you. I love you too, Mama. I spoiled Billy, but now I'm getting scared. I'd be so embarrassed if my mom, like, I, I understand he's still pretty young, but if your mom's like, I love you, I just want to go in there and scrub his little willy, like, I would, mom, you'd have to get the hell up out of here if that was the case. Scared to death. So this operation uh, is aimed to improve his posture and ability to walk and breathe. So this will be a positive step for him. I don't know, is he getting tight? We're losing our foot. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Surgery went very well. Billy, you did really well, okay? Uh... The first 72 hours after surgery are critical for Billy. I'm in so much pain. I know you are, honey. I know, baby, but it'll all be over in just a little while. Just hang in a little while. But yeah, they cut like a whole apron off him. They got rid of a lot more than just his stomach. So all that pulling and everything from him laying there, it's going to hurt like hell. But at least you got mommy there holding your hands. I mean, I guess she thinks that's some kind of painkiller. But he's definitely a mama's boy. It might actually be helping. A longer please. Billy has a blood clot in his leg, and that can be a dangerous situation. Uh -oh. Doctors have to operate to prevent the blood clot from traveling to Billy's heart or lungs. Okay, Billy, slowly I need you to scoot in this uh, narrow bed, so we'll help you. Okay. Then let's take your time. Oh, my leg. Don't be afraid oh. of pain. Come on. Oh, good. Oh, oh. Easier said than done, but also, why do you got him scooting over onto a narrow bed? Do they need that to wheel him in or something? Because all that scooting and everything is just going to pull on those stitches. It's going to hurt. And if those things ripped, I could only imagine. It looks like he's got a football down his side. Oh! You're almost there, hon. You're doing really well. I'm going to try to go above the cloth. If not, we go to the other groin. This is the other groin. How many does he have? Been nothing but a big old emotional roller coaster. He's what I live and breathe for. And if he dies, I, I just jump in the coffin with him. There'd be no reason to live anymore. None at all. That operation is also successful, and Billy starts his road to recovery. This child is very demanding. He's a big old baby. God knows if I had it to do over again, I would love him just as much, but. Ma'am, you babying him and like treat over loving him is what kind of probably helped him get to the situation. At the same time, I understand she's going through some loss from the first son. So she probably just pushed all that love onto him. He got double the love and he got double the cream filling too. Buddy ate all of the double stuffs. So there's a point where it becomes more harmful than good. I understand what she's trying to do, but she's definitely going about it the wrong way. Enablers always think they're doing what's best for you. I would change everything. Even his diaper. After recovering, Billy went on to have gastric sleeve surgery. It's a procedure that removed 80% of his stomach. He's now 20 years old and has lost 300 pounds. Billy and his mom, Barbara, are joining us on Skype from their home in Houston, Texas. We'll talk to them when we come back. Well, okay, as a teenager, Billy Robbins weighed over 800 pounds and barely able to walk. He was last year. He had gastric sleeve surgery. He lost 300 pounds. Billy and his mom, Barbara, are joining us from Houston. Hello. Damn, 300 pounds. He's almost smaller than her now. Well, not like quite literally, but of course they're in frickin' Houston. Like Bucky's makes everybody get up to 800 pounds. Their brisket make you add on the pounds real quick. Also, they have like these candied pecan things. So good. I'm on a diet. Obviously, I can't have them. But if I did, 
Go to Bucky's. Uh, that's what I would get. Hello to both of you. Hello to both Hello. of you. Hi, Hello. Oprah. So, Billy, how has your life changed losing the, the, the weight? Uh, it's completely changed. Uh, you know, Banging all I the mean, broads. Yeah, for a while there, it was just so hard to walk or move. And uh, <clears throat> and now, you know, after losing that, all that weight, and, you know, moving is easy. Getting up and down out, out of small places is easy. It's just, you know, it's just a complete change from what I was at that point. So are you still... You know, he's kind of lucky that he put on all that weight early enough. Because if he was a little older and 800 pounds, I don't think he would have got around nearly as well as he was. But he's young enough to snap back. He'll heal quick. He had a blood clot already. So she is lucky she didn't lose another son just through feeding him too much. But then again, I mean, he would have got the food, but it probably would have just been a bunch of Pop-Tarts. I don't think he's making his own Sloppy Joes. He probably would burn himself if he touched the stove because you've done everything for him. So losing weight, did you change your lifestyle as well? Yes, ma'am. I am uh, still, I am still losing weight. I changed my lifestyle. I eat completely different. I get up and move around. I don't eat take out fatty foods, none of that, chocolate, sweets, cut that out, cut out your starches, breads, you know, just... You're you know. eating broccoli without the cheese? Uh, yes, ma'am. Yeah, because... Ma yes. Because when your mom said, you can't eat broccoli without cheese, I went, oh, yeah, you can. I thought that's what you might be thinking. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what I... But yeah, the lifestyle change, it's definitely a big adjustment. And if you go from just eating whatever and crap all the time to actually eating stuff that's somewhat good for you or actually good for you, like I'll eat eggs every day for breakfast at this point in my life, a lot of chicken breast, a lot of fish. So it, it's just night and day from how I used to eat. And I could imagine he's going through the same thing because if you go back to how you were eating, you're going to be right back at 800. Honestly, the way she cooks and as much as she brings you, She'll probably feed you all the way back up to 2,000, just so you don't ever leave her. What I was thinking, Barbara, you know, you said on the tape that uh, you blame yourself. I mean, as we're all watching this, I'm sure the audience is thinking the same thing I'm thinking, because I'm seeing this TLC tape for the first time, uh, along with the audience here. And you were, you, you have been an incredible enabler, would you say? Yes, yes. Yes, and you did that because of your feelings about, you know, obviously loving your son and also having lost Matthew. At the end of the tape that we just saw, you said you would do things differently. You would certainly love him as much, but do it differently. How would you do it differently? A sloppy Joe's for Sonny. That would probably help. But, yeah, I don't know. I don't think she would do anything differently. I think she just wouldn't want him to get that big. I still think she's going to be, like, psycho amounts of love towards this kid. Is that just is the vibe I'm getting from her? I know I can't speak for her. I just, I can't see her ever not doing everything for this kid and making him her world, which actually hurts him in the long run because he doesn't have, like, become a productive man or a productive adult. Well, his eating, I would change his eating habits totally. We would all eat different. As you can see, I do need to lose a lot of weight as well, but... Uh, I do too, there's but an we're apple behind about you. it, so... No, no, let's not today. <laughs> but I would change our life totally. I mean, our eating habits would be where I'd start, number one. And I would make sure that Junior went to summer camp and that he was active in all types of sports. And I mean, you know, if I knew what I knew back then and what was waiting down. He's just rolling his eyes because he wouldn't want to go to summer camp. Uh, some people are good with like socializing and being in the groups and being away from home. These two, I don't think, will ever be separated. Like, literally, she said she's going to jump in the coffin with him. He might just jump in with her because he don't know how to make his own sloppy jokes. Down the road. Uh-huh. Did you know how badly uh, you were feeding him? I mean, as we're watching you make those, it looked like whatever, and you're bringing him treats and bringing him snacks and saying that's what a mother does. Did you and know mustard. how bad it was, what you were doing? How unhealthy, yeah. that's the word, unhealthy. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, you did. Yes, yeah, you did. Of course, we, we know. We know as moms, but like I say, you love them and they want it. So being a mom, you, you give it to them. And I knew it was bad, but then I'm looking, well, okay, he's, he's still healthy. He's still getting up, going to the bathroom. He's not complaining with this or that. And, you know. Uh... 
that's your measure of health on if he's getting up and going to the bathroom? You give him some damn fiber or x lax and then you could say he's the healthiest man alive. But no, that's not a good measure of health, lady. You are just so, far, like, misguided here. I don't know what what else happened to her in her life or what made her think that, she, like, th that's healthy. But something's way off here with her thinking and her just whole process. Um, I don't know. Like I said, many times I just overloved him, overdid for him. So, Billy, your mom has said that she blames herself. Do you blame her or hold her responsible or wish she had done things differently? Yeah. Um, I, I really don't blame my mom. Uh, I mean, I ate the food. I took it in my hand and I ate it. No one ever forced me to. I knew what I was doing. And for the situation I got into, the only person to blame is myself because mm -hmm. no one ever forced food in my hand. No one ever forced it down my throat. I ate it well. Yeah, I, I feel the same way. I don't want to blame anybody except for envelopes because I just realized if you lick an envelope, there's like five calories in that thing. And I swear to God, my mom made me lick all the mail as a kid. So that must have accounted for at least, we're going to call it five million calories. That's a lot of damn envelopes. Willingly, and I asked for it. And so, you know, so you know what? I, uh, that, that TLC show is riveting, you know, to watch people in... in such dire situations uh, as a result of, of food and, and being overweight, not just food. But um, what do you want us to learn from your experience? Not just to, I know that you don't want us to just look at it and go, oh my God, isn't that a big guy? What do you want us all to learn from your story? You gotta learn that there's always a brighter day. There's always a chance to better yourself and you don't have to just lay down and take it and say, this is the end for me. So you gotta get some kind of motivation or some kind of like, this kid's making all the right choices at this point. He's turning his life around. That's the only thing I think you can get from this. Also, don't use mustard as freaking toothpaste because you'll get to 800 pounds. Well, I guess the main point to learn from it is that when you see people in a situation like that, you know, uh, a lot of people snicker and make judgments. You know, really don't judge a person by by that because there's a lot of roads that lead to that, to where I was. Yeah, And, True. you know, it's when a person is in that situation, making them feel bad about themselves and making fun of them and you just making them feel horrible never never makes the situation any better yeah no matter yeah. if you're just doing it to maybe shock them back into doing some doing it themselves it, it really doesn't help it yeah. it can i don't know about that people respond like differently to that type of stuff i'm somebody that wants to spite people whenever they tell me i can't because so many people told me that i was just a lost cause this or that and for a long time i believed them but then part of me kicked in that just wanted to prove people wrong. So people respond differently to everything. Some people do good with tough love. Some people need coddled. But with mama giving you too much loving, you're not going to get no rub and tug in from anyone else. So mom needs to take a step back at this point. It can only lead to making things worse. And, you know, well, I, people... wish, I wish you success on the journey. And I think that's so well put. There are a lot of roads that lead to whatever the situation is. That's what we'll take away from you today. Thank you so much, Billy and Barbara. Okay. And, and you, continued success, continued success on eating healthy. Thank you, ma'am. The broccoli without the cheese. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. All right. You can watch more of Billy's journey on the TLC documentary, Half Ton Teen. Speaking of that. Called Weight Loss with Whoppers. Check it out today. But uh, no. I think life definitely is a journey. There's a tons of road, tons of roads that will lead to a destination. And it's not always about where you start or where you end. Sometimes it's the journey that you just have to learn to enjoy. And if he's enjoying the weight loss process and having fun with it and just kind of going along and like, you know, finding some kind of satisfaction from a new lifestyle and a new lease on life, that's always a good thing. You gotta learn to find the little things that make you happy along the way and then it'll get a lot better in the end and you'll end up where you wanna go. At least that's how I look at it. But that's it for me and uh, Sean's episode of Oprah today. I'm glad somebody sent me this. I kind of wanted to see if this kid was doing well or not. But uh, yeah, that's it for this one. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see y'all later. Bye.